Ceramatch is a software for visual shape matching and classification of ceramics. It's uh, free and open source and can be downloaded from the Ceramatch homepage. Uh, the latest version is always under the releases section. Uh, currently only a Windows executable is available, but uh, Ceramatch is written in Python and uh, it's possible that in the future there, there will be a version for other uh, platforms. If you are interested in uh, the theoretical and methodical backgrounds between uh, Cera behind uh, Ceramatch and its, its inner workings, I recommend you to have a look uh, at uh, our paper about laser edit profile measurement and uh, cluster analysis of ceramic shapes. So let's download it. I will skip until it's done. Once the download is complete, we can install it. It's pretty straightforward. Just click next. Once the installation is complete, I can click finish here. Delete the installer. Can open it. And the first uh, window we see here is the select data source dialog similar to the LAP control application or the deposit uh, user interface. So here I can uh, open a deposit database containing uh, the drawings I would like to uh, classify. So uh, what we see here here is a, a query uh, entry box where I can enter queries similar to the, the browser in the LAP control application. Uh, but let's leave this now and just click load the drawings here. This will load our drawings in the on the graphical uh, in the graphical window. Maximize this. Okay. Uh, now I have I have different types of um, pottery uh, fragments here or vessels. Uh, Maybe I would like to filter them. So if I have used the, the calculate length function uh, previously in, uh, in the LAP uh, application, I can, I can just open the, the deposit interface from here. And I have the, the length descriptor here with my samples, which indicates the, the length uh, along the profile. So I can, I can use it to, to filter uh, my drawings here so I can add a where close to my query for sample length, length uh, is greater than let's say 30 millimeters this will filter my drawings a bit I can even go to 50 millimeters and so on I have selected a small small subset of drawings here, so for easier demonstration, normally you would of course work with a larger uh, assemblage. So let's just load all the drawings that we have. And now the next step would be to, to calculate uh, degrees of similarity. I said, uh, if you are interested uh, in exactly what what this is, uh, have a look at the the paper in the Journal of Field Archaeology. But if I click here on the Calculate Distances button, I get a, a menu offering me uh, to calculate the different types of distances. Now, the, these first two, the diameter and axis distance, uh, so or we could, we could say measure of similarity. They are easy to or quick to calculate. Uh, the dice distance uh, takes quite a quite a lot of time and processing power. So, with a with a larger uh, assemblage, currently it could take even a couple of days to calculate. Uh, hopefully, in the future, this will be this will be optimized for a better speed. But for a smaller assemblage, uh, this should take 
uh, reasonably uh, short time. So let's click OK. And the uh, calculation will start. I will, I will skip uh, ahead. So once the distances are calculated, I can use the auto cluster function here. Uh, there are some parameters to clustering, uh, which are uh, these. The, the, the preset ones are uh, recommended, but uh, you can you can uh, maybe try different settings here. But let's, let's just click auto cluster, and this will produce a clustering of the ceramic shapes. Uh, depending on, on their uh, degree of similarity. So you can see the, the uh, plate types are clustered together here. Uh, and so are other other types of uh, other shapes. Uh, maybe some shapes are uh, not clustered uh, in a way that I uh, that makes sense to me. Maybe I would like to, to uh, modify this is uh, this serves more like a, like a help, like an initial sorting, and then the, the final classification should be also, of course, done according to uh, the expertise of an, uh, an archaeologist or a ceramics expert. So I can I can modify the clusters here just by left clicking and dragging and dropping the the fragments on uh, different clusters. So the, the gray dots here represent clusters, and they have some uh, some cluster numbers. The numbers are uh, hierarchical, so they also uh, include the information about the, the clustering, uh, the dendro dendrogram. So this way, I can I can modify the clusters. I can also move several several fragments at once and change the change the structure of the tree. If I want to, to select a whole branch, I can just click anywhere and use this uh, select descendants uh, function. So this can, oops, this can make it easier to, to manipulate the, the tree structure. So I can I can also I can also uh, rename the clusters simple way there is also an undo function and if I'm in if I have some uh, attributes so here with the with my database I have only recorded the sample ID so if I click on a on a drawing on a sample then I can see the ID if I if I have uh, <coughs> if I specified uh, more descriptors such as material uh, uh, feature number area number they would be displayed here and I could uh, I could modify them actually uh, from from the Ceramic uh, interface so the, cl the clustering can be exported uh, into to an Excel file via the export clustering function. Just click it here, save, and when I open it, see there there are two columns in the Excel file. One is the the sample ID, and one is the cluster. Let's say I would like to uh, modify this. Let's say I, I would like to to simplify. The, the cluster, uh, the tree structure, and to, to just to only go three three levels deep. So I would rename all clusters clusters that start by one to three to just one to three, and one to five to just one to five, and so on. Save it. And now I can import the clustering back by the, by the import clustering function. Can select it, open it, and here I could uh, I could uh, have a different uh, structure, different names of the columns in the Excel file. Just select the, the appropriate columns here. Click OK, and the clustering is imported. You see, it's it's 
much more much more simpler now uh, of course this is probably over oversimplified uh, uh, but but just as an as an example now what else i can do i can export the the dendrogram as a pdf file I can select the the resolution here dpi the the, the page size the format uh, line width and uh, the destination so let's say i want to save it on uh, the desktop click ok could export it okay this is uh, i i have probably i should have used a larger larger format or uh, uh, a larger resolution it's it needs uh, some experimentation especially with uh, dendrograms which can which can get quite quite large but uh, this is uh, how it's done um, I can also uh, export the the clustering as a in a form of, in the form of a catalog. So let's try this. Here I can specify the scale either explicitly or let the software automatically choose it. Destination on the desktop. Okay. And here a catalog is created where each cluster is exported as a just a set set of drawings and uh, of course there's there's also always a scale and on each page and uh, this is uh, ex exported in uh, as uh, as uh, vectors so it can be manipulated in a vector editing software to, to have a nicer uh, design perhaps So these are the basic functions of Ceramage and I hope uh, software can uh, make the, the task of classifying uh, your uh, pottery assemblage easier.